In this video, we're going to talk about how you can implement pathfinding like this. So this, this red square is the player and whenever you click somewhere, it will find a path for that. You can see that there is a wall and there is a tree in here and the player can find its path to that position that you click. So without any further ado, let's begin! Hey, I'm Navid Ansari and in this video we're gonna talk about how you can implement pathfinding in your game maker project. So for that let's just create a new project. Let's just call it pathfinding save and in here we need some a sprite and object some sprite for obstacles like wall and tree and some object like player so let's just create them go to a sprite and create first the sprite let's just call it spr wall change its dimension to 32 for simplicity but you can uh, change the dimension whatever you want i will explain it how it is matter click apply and edit image for while and this i want to use this color and that's it for wall Control d to duplicate duplicate it one more time and in here i want to call this tree edit it it's for tree so Let's just give it a green color. Let's name this ball. This one is for player. Let's just change its color to red. Or player has a red color. Or enemy or whatever. So we have three sprites. One for player, one for tree and one for wall just close them now but before we close them uh, we should anchor them on the middle so pathfinding will work greatly so middle center tree middle center as well and for the player and wall it should be middle center as well so now that we have our sprite let's just create object off of all of them so create object obg player and give it an sprite of player that we create this is duplicate duplicate player two time for wall and for tree so wall change its sprite to wall this object, object player tree that we duplicated for tree change its sprite to tree so we didn't do anything till here you know all of this so let's just close them now that we create them now that we have our objects let's just go to room and create our room let's use this wall object to create our wall so after that let's just create some maze here so that is our maze let's just put some tree in some places to see if or player can find its way, or its way around them. Now that's our maze, and our player should be here. So if we click in here, our player should find a way to go through all of this and find its way to here, where we click on left most button. So before we move on, let's just explain how pathfinding works in Game Maker. So this is our player, right? 
and these walls and tree are obstacles. So game maker create a grid of this room and find every path possible for our player to reach its destination. So for that we should create an object and create a grid in that object. So right click on object and create an object in here. Let's just call it OBG grid. Add a create event in here and what you should do, you should just write MP grid create. That's it. No, I want to show you the documentation for this grid. So click on middlemost so it will open the documentation for MP Greek create. You can read all of this but I will explain everything to you. First input is left and top of the grid that we want to create. So if we go to room we want to create a grid of all of this room so the top left corner is here zero and zero so let's just put that there zero and zero so let's see what else edges what edges horizontal cells mean number of horizontal cells that the map grid will contain so how we can calculate that Let's just go to room to explain to you something in here. To calculate how many cells there is in our room for horizontal cells or vertical cells. So because we want to find a path for our player, so the cell size should be the same as the size of this player that we have here. So we should calculate how many player we can put on this room for that we can get the height and width of our player with cool sprite get width and this sprite that we want to find the width of it is player copy and paste this for height as well, player right. get height of that this is the player width and player height we want to see how many of this player we can put on our room edge cells equal room, room width player width we didn't use this because we don't want any float value so whenever you say div like this it don't it won't give you any floating value so let's just do it for vertical cells as well change this to v and Room height divided by player height and so let's just see it one more time edge cells is the number of horizontal cells that the map grid will contain so we can use this in here and the V cell in here for this and the cell width and cell height you know that it is player width and player height player width and for cell height player height so this will create our grid let's put it on the on a variable so we can use it everywhere so let's just say global dot my grid and in example in here you can see 
it, it will put it on the global variable so we can use that grid wherever we want after we did this we should define what objects are obstacles so player is not obstacles so how we can do that we can say mp grid add instances and for the id we should say global dot my grid you can go where you want and the object we want to avoid object that is obstacles in our room so in here is obg wall and the last is the precise input let's just see what it is in documentation so you see the precise is like this and the not precise is like this i always use not precise but uh, depending on your project you can use precise it will be a slow you can just uh, put true in here but it will be a slow you can test it on some emulators some phones and some windows to see if it's a slow just put it on not precise but it, if it's not a slow just put it in precise in here I want to say false because I don't want it to be precise and we should do this for obg tree as well because the tree is obstacles as well so obg tree and that's all for our obg grid when we create this obg grid we should go to room and add that obg grid to our room in here and one more thing that you should consider you should go to room and in instance creation order in here you should put this obg grid at the above of everything now that we add this we can go to player and write code for that so for our player let's just create a global global left pressed event in here get rid of all of this comment and in here we said we want to say mp read path so with this let's just go to documentation of this function to see what it does it use our grid to find a path for our player so for the first input is index of the mp grid that is to be used so we create that grid global.migrid and the path we should add a path first and then use it in here so let's just create a create event in here and create a path let's just call it my path so you you know that you call you can call it want and let's say path add that's it you create a path and you say path add and no you can use it in this pathfinding function my path next input is x start and y start the starting x coordinate of the new path so the start is always the x and y the destination that player we want to find a path for i want to say the where most head press left button so you can say device most x and put zero in here and device y and zero in here for the last input let's just go to documentation indicate whether diagonal moves are allowed instead of just horizontal or vertical in this case i want to say allow uh, true because we want to have diagonal moves so we say true in here and what this function gives us it gives us a boolean if it's true so we know that this function 
find find a path. But if it, if it give us a false, it means that it it couldn't find any path. So we can use that in a if a statement in here. We say if this is true path start and if we go to documentation of this you see that the first input is path second a speed and action and the absolute that is whether the calling instance should follow the absolute path as it is in the editor or a relative path to its current position so i want to yeah, I want to test both of these so you can see what is the difference. So for the first uh, for first input, the path is my path. For this, we let's put a value here, and act in here we can say action, half action, a stop. So what is this path? Path, oh, path action. A stop you can go to documentation and you can see all of this and action in here if we put this for the input it will stop at the end of uh, when when it reached its destination if we put this action it's continue from the start position jumping to the start if the path is not closed so we wanted to stop and for absolute let's just put true in here so know that everything is set up we can play for a game click on here you can see that it has diagonal moves let's just click in here to see if it can find a path And you can see it avoid all, all the walls and trees in its path that's good let's just change the speed to something crazy like 20 and test some pathfinding in our maze cool So that works for everything. One question that I that I know all of you have is when you have a player that have direction in it. So you can't use path start for following the path that this function map grid path finding find for you. So there is a way to do that. But uh, if I want to explain it in this video, it takes so much time. If you want to know how you can uh, use the path that we find in here and separate it line by line and follow that path by yourself, by your function, move function that you have with direction, with the speed or with whatever you have, just leave it in comment. I will explain it later thank you very much for watching please for motivating me to create more video like this just hit that subscribe button like button or bell button again thank you thank you thank you very much for watching bye